Hi, I'm Paul Germain, and welcome to another session of Smart Boating. As you know, if you've watched the show before, we cover a wide variety of topics, from man overboard to docking, and the general idea is to give you some information that will help you make smarter decisions and have more fun on the water. Today, we're in Marblehead, Mass. at Ripcraft to learn more about ribs. And joining us is a very knowledgeable person in that area. Her name is Kelly Marie. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you. Hey, Kelly, we've got a really interesting show here today in ribs. But uh, before we get into it, can you share a little bit about your involvement with boating and a little bit about ribcraft? Sure, sure. Um, so I grew up on the water sailing, actually here in Marblehead, mm -hmm. and um, spent you know all the summers on the water with my family. And we actually had a ribcraft rib when I was growing up. Oh, you did. Used it for following us around junior sailing and running around the harbor having fun. So I'm very familiar with the boats, um, yeah. which is great. And in terms of ribcraft, we started back in 2001 here in uh, the U.S. Okay. And. Um, we build boats for first responders, military agencies, commercial operators, yacht clubs, recreational people like you and I. Right. So there's a wide variety of uses for these boats. Yeah, so they're quite a variety of sizes too, right? Yes, so yeah. our models range from 15 feet all the way up to 41 feet. Okay, all right. Well, there's yes. got to be something in there for everyone. Right? Exactly, exactly, <laughs> yes. Well, you've got just the right knowledge to start the show, so why don't we get into it? Sounds great, thanks. Okay. Well, Kelly, this subject of rigid inflatable boats is a very large one, and it's very difficult to cover everything in a half hour. But I think we can cover the most important points, the highlights, and uh, we're going to talk about construction in just a minute. But before we get into that, maybe we can talk just a minute about history. My understanding is that ribs as a type of boat uh, started out as popular in Europe first. Is there, is there some truth to that? That's correct, that? Yeah. yes. Well, let's back up a little bit. A rib is a rigid inflatable boat. So yes. it has a hard bottom and soft sides that are filled with air, the tubes yes. are. Okay. Um, but yes, the ribs started back in Europe um, and you know, there are three main reasons why Europeans were drawn to ribs. Okay. First being um, the sea condition out there is generally a little rougher and choppy. Mm, a little choppy. Kind of like what we have here on the North Shore oftentimes. Right, right. Um, so they needed something that could perform well no matter what the conditions were. Okay. So the rib has a much deeper V hull which allows it to go out in all these conditions. Yes. So that was one item. Yeah. Um, the other thing is fuel economy. Yes. Fuel was so expensive in Very Europe expensive. that um, they needed something that was much more fuel efficient than kind of what we think of for a standard boat. Good point. Um, so ribs are much lighter weight, therefore they're a little more efficient than mm -hmm. what we would normally consider. Okay. Um, and the third piece was um, they have a lot of small cars over in Europe. They do, yeah. And so they needed to be able to tow boats. All right. But if you have a huge, heavy boat, it's hard to tow it with the small cars. Yeah, so they don't have an F-250 <laughs> in the driveway over there. Exactly, exactly. So <laughs> right. they needed something that was lighter weight, um, which again helps with the fuel economy and all that. Okay, so they, became, they were popular over there for years, then they kind of migrated across the pond. Yes, and, and actually, today. If you go to Europe, we often have customers comment to us that they're on vacation and you know, they see so many more ribs, so many bigger ribs compared to what we're used to in the U.S. Yes, so we're still yes. kind of catching up to the European trends, but yeah. we're working on Taking it. Taking time. <laughs> yes. Well, let's talk about this rib behind us here. Can you help people understand, you talked just now about the fiberglass hull, and the, can you point out this, the sure, key sure. aspects here? So this is the fiberglass hull. It's solid. Yeah. and um, kind of what you would think of for a standard boat, solid fiberglass hull. Yes, And then it, mm -hmm. it's glued to um, these tubes, which okay. are made of hypalon, and they're just filled with air. Okay, all right. Um, so the two of them together, we kind of look at it as we build two boats and put them together, oh. combining one superior boat. <laughs> right, absolutely. That's interesting now that the V's are pretty aggressive on the fiberglass hulls, right? What, yes. 21 to 24 e type dead exactly. rise? Exactly. So the tubes allow us to have a much deeper V hull because they provide oh. the stability okay. and the greater performance, um, making it a better boat. Yeah. Another thing I, my understanding is that you get with the tubes is that they knock down a lot of the spray. Exactly, right? yes. yes. It deflects the spray away. It's a much drier ride, okay. um, very comfortable ride. Yeah, yeah. And. Um, just, we're going to get into the construction just momentarily, but how are the tubes uh, attached to the fiberglass hull? Is there kind of a fail-safe way to make sure those two pieces don't come apart? 
The way we do it is we glue them. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's a very involved process. It's you know not just a glue stick or anything, right. but glue the two together. Um, some other manufacturers have bolt ropes that attach them, but here at Ribcraft we do uh, glue. Glue is the way to go, yeah. Yes. And that's proven to be a very durable, long-lasting solution. Exactly. So yeah. as we mentioned earlier, we build a lot of boats for first responders and yes. military yes. and commercial operators. And you know they require something that can withstand all sorts of conditions and right. withstand wear and tear. Um, so here at Ribcraft, we build boats the same way uh, for the Navy as we would for right. you and I. So you know you're getting a great product. You know you're getting something that can withstand wear and tear and it's built to last. Okay, professional grade. Exactly. Professional grade. <laughs> Kelly, the process of putting a rib together, as you mentioned, is uh, really like putting two separate boats together, marrying them together. And uh, we're, we're standing beside a fiberglass hull. Correct. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about this? Is it, well, what size are we looking at first? So this is one of our Ribcraft 7 eighths. It's 25 feet um, and this is kind of what it would look like when it pops out of the mold. Okay. So um, it's a solid fiberglass hull. It's made of all composite materials. Um, so this is the base of the boat. Yes. And uh, surprisingly, this would actually be totally fine to float and perform in the water, even without the tube. It's just like a hard-sided boat. It just doesn't have the actual sides. Which, Isn't that something? Yeah. yeah. So this is the deep V hull that we were talking about. Exactly. So this would yeah. be, again be in the 22 to 24 degree dead rise. And uh, yeah, so this is this is the foundation in which you're going to put the gas tank in and the console and all the that stuff. The engine and the yes. tubes and exactly. Yeah. Yep. So when we move in, in one direction with this, another direction with the tubes, then we <laughs> then you put them together. Right. Exactly. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Well, Kelly, there's a few different fiberglass elements to these ribs. Of course, the hull, and here's another one, the console. This, I guess, is solid glass. Yep, solid fiberglass as well, just like our hulls. Right, right, right. And is there a general theme to the layout? This one seems to be set up for twins, and uh, looks like it's got a lot of space for electronics. Exactly, yes, yeah. yes. So, Ribcraft, uh, we personalize all the boats based on the customer's needs, so yes. this one's going to have a few extra electronics, which is where the green tape is. Right, I would think a lot of these boats would have electronics. But they're probably more purchased by experienced boaters that are more engaged with the electronic side of things. Right? Yes, yes. So I believe this um, console is being built for a customer that um, is going to use their rib uh, as a shipboard operations um, to launch from the mothership to do some uh, law enforcement. Oh, okay. All right. So electronics should be key for them. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. And this is just going to uh, basically bolt down to the fiberglass. Yep, exactly. In the hull. Right onto the deck. Right. Well, Kelly, you know, a lot of boaters are going to be familiar with small inflatables. You know, something they might tow behind their cabin cruiser or something. Uh, but they're not going to be as familiar with ribs, and especially industrial grade ribs. Um, can you share with us a little bit about the different materials they use in these different types of boats and what the trade-offs are? Certainly, certainly. So there are three main materials that a rib could be made out of ribs and inflatables. Yeah. Um, we'll start at the bottom level, yep. um, PVC. So PVC. that's what these small inflatables that you're referring to are often made out of. Right. Um, it's not very UV stable okay. and they usually only last three to five years. So the trade-off is it not much length of time, the durability, but probably less expensive. Exactly, right? less expensive, okay. and those the PVC is great for kind of the roll-up inflatables that All you right. think of. Right. It's meant to be malleable and it's okay to roll it. Yes. Um, so that's PVC. Then okay. there's um, polyurethane, which is a little bit more UV stable, and that'll last about five to seven years, so a little bit longer longevity, but okay. um, kind of the mid-grade level. Mid-grade, okay. All right. And then the third one is Hypalon, which um, is kind of a rubberized fabric. And that's what here at Ribcraft, that's what we use to build our boats with. And that's what we've got here. Exactly, so yes. So rubberized fabric. So there's yes. a fabric underneath here, and then there's some yeah, sort of Yeah, it's kind of woven, rubber. and the oh, fibers are all together. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. So this is the strongest. So there's, within Hypalon, there's various levels okay. of strength. And um, all right. we use 1670 Desitex Hypalon here at Ribcraft. Okay. Um, and as you can see, it comes in a variety of colors. Yeah, and like orange or black or gray or... Exactly, so Hypalon is much more UV stable than PVC or polyurethane. 
Um, so it's meant to last longer and withstand sunshine. Um, and it'll last 12 to 15 years, if not longer. Oh, nice. So Ripcraft's been in business here in the U.S. for about 20 years. Yeah. And we are just starting to see a couple boats come back for retubes. Wow. Which is pretty impressive. Yeah, that's good evidence of the mice. Exactly. Right. So, right. you know, if they're generally maintained and cared for, they'll last longer than the 12 to 15 years. We've seen them last 30 plus years. Wow, wow, wow. And this is very durable. Not, not just in terms of the longevity, but in terms of day-to-day -day use, right? So, so you're not going to tear this material, and you're not. You're going to have to work very hard to puncture it. Exactly. It's just a very. It's kind of like rhino uh, hide, you know. <laughs> exactly. It's that strong, it's, you know. Certainly, certainly. You know, a lot of people question whether they can fish off of ribs. Yes. And right. You really can, as long as you use, you know, common sense not to hook yourself. You're not going to hook the tube, right. so it's totally safe to. And you know, we have a lot of customers who do enjoy fishing off their ribs. I bet. Yeah. Well, Kelly, we're standing here inside, kind of inside the boat, if you will, inside exactly. the tubes, anyways. And we're, this is where the rigid fiberglass hull would normally be, and we're on the shop floor. Can you help people understand a little bit how we get to this? I guess this is made up of a series of chambers which culminate in tubes? Yes, exactly. So this is um, a Hypelon tube for a, one of our 7 eighths, a 25 foot boat. Um, as we talked about earlier, it's made of the 1670 Desitex Hypelon, so super yes. durable and strong. Yes. Um, all of our tubes have air chambers in them. Okay. And so, so a tube is this whole piece that extends down tube. to the stern. And within this tube there, um, this one has seven air chambers. Seven air chambers. And, and it would start up here, would it? Exactly. And you know it's And it goes down to about here. So maybe three feet or so? Yes, and it varies depending on the size of the boat. Yeah. Um, but okay. our tubes have triple bonded seams to ensure, you know, they're securely fastened and that's everything. That's tube to tube. Yep, I exactly. Mean, chamber to chamber, yep, right? Yep. Chamber to chamber, yep. So that's right in here on this one. And then how about this? What's, uh, what's the function of this right here? That's again just to ensure um, that the tubes are securely made and fastened together. Okay, just another a layer of reinforcement. Exactly, yes. Okay. And so having the different chambers is great. So, you know, if for some reason you were able to puncture one of the chambers, Right. The whole tube doesn't deflate, just a small portion of it okay, does. Okay, maybe just a section does. Exactly. Right. And you maintain your positive buoyancy that way. So, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And um, our tubes also all have pressure relief valves. So oh, they do? How, um, what does that do? So it's great for, you know, in the summertime, the temperature changes will sometimes yes. inflate them. You never have to worry about your tube over inflating because the relief oh. valve will release air before that happens. Oh, so it goes to a certain pressure, if you will, and then exactly. it opens. Exactly. And it's also a good safety measure. You know, if you hit a dock or, you know, run into something, you're not going to puncture the tube. It's going to release air before that happens. Okay. All right. Now, the, the tube that we're standing in right now, uh, this would be quote unquote undressed, if you will, <laughs> yes. right? And then uh, what would be some of the things that you do to dress the tube and how long would that typically take? Sure, so um, you can see the green tape here is laying yes. out the various, uh, the rub strake and lifelines okay. and boarding wear patches, yeah. um, depending on the customer's layout and preferences. But all of our tubes have a really heavy duty rub strake yeah. um, and that helps add some protection to the boat. Right, right. And they, and they feature larger than normal handles as well, right? So yep, we have, people have maybe gloves on or something, they can still hang on tightly exactly. even in bad so, you conditions. Know, the law enforcement and you know, government agencies often yeah. you know, are out in cold They've weather go and they're they going to be go wearing foul weather gear. So having you know, good right. handholds is great. So those are some of the things that are going to come on this one and it could take a week or two or whatever to get from this to the next day. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, we're back here and it looks like the tube has been attached to the hull. Exactly. So this is our fiberglass hull and now the tube has been glued onto it. Mm -hmm. And you've got to do what? Hypalon to Hypalon, right? Yes. So we that put a connection. strip of Hypalon on the hull mm -hmm. that we glue the tube to. So you're gluing Hypalon to Hypalon. Okay. And that gives you a really, really strong bond, a long lasting bond. Exactly. Yeah. And it also allows for a little give, you know, when you're bouncing oh, right. over the waves. Right. You're not just pulling directly against the fiberglass. It adds right. a little give Some to flexes. it. It's like a shock absorber to a certain extent. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
And what other things do you do at this stage? How about these? Uh, All right, so this is the life, lifeline patches and okay. the rev strake are now glued on. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see how it's the tube is glued on to the inset of the hull. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the guys are working on it here, you know, cleaning up the glue and ensuring that they're securely attached. Okay, all right, all right. So get the tubes together, join them with a the hull. Yep. And then you head out to, especially the larger boats, dress them out with the consoles and the wiring and all that, right? Exactly, exactly, okay. yes. Well, an important part of the operation, of course, is building out the fiberglass hull. If we start the bow here, it looks like he's doing some rigging, but the forward I see a walker, I Yep, guess? exactly, yep. and that'll have um, kind of a bow seating platform up there once it's finished. Okay. Um, we've got some cutouts for some speakers. Yeah. You can see we've got the fuel tank inside here. Yeah, yeah, this is what, roughly 100 gallons or something yep, like exactly. that? Yep, exactly. Um, yep. And the console will be in the middle here, which is actually right, right behind you. Okay. Um, oh, this one right here. All right, they've got it mocked up in terms of what's going where. Exactly, yep. Right. And then they'll cut it, probably cut it and wire it while it's out of the boat and then put it in the boat. Exactly, right? yep, yep, for sure. Yep. Um, and then moving back, this one has a molded bench seat in the aft, which is will again have some nice cushions and a comfortable seating area. Right, right, right. And we're actually standing right where the air tubes will be, right? Yes. The tubes will be right here. Once they're glued down, you can see the hype here oh, that they it's going to be right glued on here. To. Yep. Right, okay. All right. First responders really like ribs for a lot of different reasons. And you have to modify them a little bit for their purposes. What would be, might be some of the modifications that are made on this fire boat behind us? Sure, so this was built for um, a dive team. Um, okay. It has some bow reinforcing at the front. Um, right. It's got some reinforcing on the rub strake just to add some extra protection. So we get some extra width there. Yep, exactly. All right. and, the, and, and the front is about, I don't know, people wanting to come in over the bow as well as any other place? Right, or gear, or anything like that, just to add a, a little extra something to protect the tube. Okay. Um, these tubes also have boarding wear patches, which help for getting in and out of the boat. That's what these are here? These Oh, right these here. here, okay. Yes. Right, 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 okay. So they can step on that. And then uh, do you typically have radar arches on these boats? Yep, so this one has an antenna arch with a dive ladder um, that folds down, which makes it for ease of use for the team to get in and out of the water with you know, their tanks and whatnot. Right, and do you see some of the ribs being used without the dive ladders? Absolutely. Pretty easy to get in and out of? Exactly, it has a low freeboard, so it's easy to get in and out, even if you don't have the ladder. But the antenna arch is nice for adding lights or yeah, antennas. Yeah, everyone's and, got the emergency lights, yeah. Right, so right. So it's, it's, it's relatively straightforward to customize a rib to the specifications that you want. Exactly, yes. yeah. yeah. Well, you know, Kelly, uh, people may uh, bring ribs into their short list of consideration for their next boat, placement boat. And one of the things that might be on their minds is uh, maintenance. How would the maintenance on a rib construction be different or the same as a rigid hull? So the great thing about ribs is the maintenance is very low. Um, a lot of our professional customers appreciate that, and that's why they gravitate right. towards ribs because you know simple wash down at the end of the day really is all you need. Oh, it is. Um, okay. You know, simple basic care is great for the boat, but you don't have to worry about maintaining the fiberglass if it gets any dings or repairing anything like that. Right. The Normally you got to wash and wax. You right. do a lot of waxing in a fiberglass boat. Right. Really. The tubes, no waxing on this. I mean, no. the beginning and end of the season, it's always good to do a thorough wash down and yeah. maybe a little, um, you know, buff on it. But generally, it's low maintenance, which it makes them very attractive to people. Well, Kelly, you know, these days there's a, a lot of various trends going on in the, um, the boating world. Uh, here at Ripcraft, I mean, I guess you have the ability to put on water jets or IOs or outboards, but do you see any trends in terms of the type of propulsion that people like to get and, and maybe the size of it? Sure, sure. So for some of um, our military customers, we'll do inboards, but generally most of our boats are made with outboards. Yes. And that is kind of the trend of center consoles these days. Everyone likes to see an outboard. Right. Um, and the nice thing about ribs is you can have lower horsepower but have a faster boat. Get equivalent or better performance. Exactly. Right. So how um, many feet is this one? So this uh, is our Ribcraft 6.5, it's 21 feet. 21 feet, we got a, what is this? A one, 150 on one, it. 150, yeah. Um, what kind of performance would someone expect out of this? 
This one will go about mid 45 miles per hour. Oh, in mid 40s. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and how about, is there a certain load that it's rated for as well? So it can take up to 12 passengers, so the seating for nine. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of people will sit on the sides of the tubes, and it's a really fun boat for piling all your friends on. And <laughs> but the mid 40s is probably a driver, a couple passengers, a light mode, right? Yes, yes. But, uh, and it'll do that 45 miles per hour in any sea state, in all conditions. It will. You don't okay. have to wait for a nice calm day. You right. can go out whenever you want. Right. And just like you said, you can probably use a less horsepower, or a, a, an engine lesser horsepower than an equivalent boat. And that results not only in speed, but also in fuel economy, right? Right. And cost savings in general. Right. Right. Kelly, you look at boats today whether it's in the showroom or the boat shows, that sort of thing, and uh, there's a few good ones. They cover the spectrum from moderately priced to high price, and it's a group of premium boats, you know. Um, I was wondering where a premium rib-related boat, rib construction boat, would fit into that picture of pricing. They're very comparable to hard-sided boats, um, so whether it's the Whaler or Grady or Regulator, Pursuit, whatever it may be, a rib craft is very similar in price to um, the hard side of boats. Okay, all right. So when you think premium boat lines, rib craft would be priced accordingly, and that would be what would be an example of a price, so the range, if you will. Um, so we're standing in front of our 48T, our 15 foot, mm -hmm. um, and with this layout, it would be. Um, in the mid 30s. Mid 30s, okay. Yes. And again, you look at the Grady or Whaler or that sort of thing, and they're both to be right, right in there. Yes. Yeah, yes. okay, okay. Well, Kelly, you know, boating as a sport, I think, has become more and more popular, but unfortunately, it's become more expensive <laughs> as the years have gone on. And I was just wondering, uh, is, it a, is it a smart move to consider a, a used rib as well as a new rib? Certainly. Um, no, there is a used market for boats um, and ribs too and the um, great thing about ribs is they have a high resale value. They hold on to their oh, value okay. so you know someone can use it for 10 years and then pass it on to someone else and then still get another 10 years out of it. Right. Okay. Um, you know we talked about the longevity the of the durability. tubes earlier yes. so um, and they're a great boat for we have a lot of yacht clubs who use our boats and um, they'll kind of start a trade-in program where they sell one and buy oh, okay. a new one. Yes. And the ones that they're selling are a great way for some more community-based clubs to get into the rib market, right. Um, right. to add one to their program that they might not be able to afford at full price. Right. Um, and it's also a great first boat for people learning to get out on the water. And yes, it's very safe. It's safe, you know, you have kind of a whole fender around you. It right. protects right. you a little bit. Right. So it's a, a great bumper. first boat. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Now, uh, you guys uh, are involved in that market to a certain extent because you take on brokerage yep, yep, of we the do. ribs, right? Yep. So uh, you can be a good source. Um, how about if someone is out there and they find one, it's a little run down, can they bring it here to get refurbished? Certainly. We have a great service department. Um, this one behind us actually that was in here for a little rehab and you know, we can bring tubes looking back to new and help with any console issues, repowers. We have a great service department. We also offer a concierge um, service for people in the area. If they okay. buy a new boat, we'll bring them, drop them off at the right. beginning of the season, haul them out at the end, and help maintain it over the winter, winterizing and storing. Nice, very nice. You know, Kelly, it's interesting to me the lineage, the common lineage that the recreational boats, like this 21-footer, and the commercial craft or the first responders or even the Navy are similar. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so here at Ripcraft, we build all our boats the same, whether we're building it for the Navy or we're building it for you or a yacht club or anyone. Okay. So it's the same solid fiberglass hull, same level of Hypalon tubes. Mm -hmm. um, and we just kind of change out the features on the top sides depending on what the customer needs. So right. whether it's, you know, more robust, um, tow bits or right. different engine options, electronics, yes. um, different color schemes, but <laughs> right. the materials, the base of the materials are all the same. Yeah, right, so it's professional grade regardless whether you're going recreational or you're going commercial exactly. or governmental. And then the Navy might have some interesting power choices. I know that you guys were fortunate enough to land a Navy contract, which yes. starts in the middle of this year, I think, right? Yes, yeah, so we just finished um, 
or we've been building seven meter ribs, which are the standard for U.S. Navy ships around the world. So mm -hmm. we've been building um, those for the past five years, and we're just starting. Um, we got an award for 11 meter ribs, yes. um, which are 39 foot expeditionary countermine measure ribs that. Um, we're pretty excited about it. It's going to be a really neat boat. <laughs> it is going to be neat, but it's got some neat power on it, right? It's got some Cummings diesels in there. Exactly, power. with some um, jets, and it's got all sorts of accessories on top. Um, so it's going to be a cousin to this boat, but <laughs> on steroids, right? Ex exactly, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be something. And that starts production in the middle of the summer, right? June yes, and July. Yep, we should have the first haul by the end of the year. So. Excellent. Beautiful. Kelly, we've covered a lot of ground today, but unfortunately, we're out of time. And some of those more interesting aspects I thought that we covered were, you know, how a rib is different in design, how you, you work on the fiberglass side, you work on the tube side, and you marry them together, and there's a lot of different customization. So there's a lot to learn about ribs, and, and I, think we, I think hopefully we helped a lot of people learn more about the, the genre, if you will, today. Um, is there anything you'd like to add before we wrap up the show? Well, first, thanks for coming and sharing all our information with all the viewers. It's great sure. to have you here at Ribcraft. Yeah. Um, and as we discussed, Ribcrafts are professional grade. They provide an excellent ride on the water. They're fast, they're lightweight, they're fuel efficient. Um, they're really, truly a great boat for first responders, military, yacht clubs, all sorts of end users. Right, right, a lot of different applications. Now, if someone has a question on ribs, can they Absolutely. Can they Check us guys? out. We're at uh, www.ribcraftusa.com and lots of information there. You can even build a rib to get more ideas on um, layouts and pricing and all of that. Very cool. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Smart Boating viewers, for joining us today. If you have comments or questions, please visit our website, www.smartboatingus.com. Thank you.